In this video, we will finish the creation of the concept art for your animated film. Make sure you have seen the previous video first before you continue watching this one. Step 5. Hardware, software. I just want to start off this section by saying that if you are already good with pen and paper, or even can use paint and brush, then you don't need any painting software at all. You just need a browser for access to references and your art equipment, and then you're ready. However, this tutorial is very focused on digital painting. Since this is a course in computer animation, it is the natural way to generate our images. If you paint with real paint, you can just skip the rest of this video if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it since there might be some nuggets of good info along the way. So, with that out of the way, Let's discuss what you need for digital painting. When drawing on a computer, hardware is actually more important than good software. This is because you can't draw with a mouse or a touchpad. I'm sorry, but you need a pen to draw, so invest in some kind of drawing tablet. The cheapest Wacom doesn't cost much, but the difference it makes can't be described. Simply put, you have to get one if you want to paint on your computer. I personally use a Surface Pro for all of my drawing needs, since it allows me to draw directly on the screen, but that is not a must in any way. I also have a Wacom Intuos for my desktop, that I use for different tasks, and it works great. So, what software do I use? This time I will only mention and recommend a single software option, and that is Krita. Krita is a free, open source digital painting software that I think is just amazing. It is easy to use, full of all the features at least I could ask for, has super powerful brushes, among other things. It is simply a great great program. If you have never tried it before, I really think you should do so. As a complement to Krita, we also have a software called PureRef, which is a very simple but good software that allows you to easily organize and look at all the different reference images you have collected during your research. It is a really good way to look at them all at once, without having to flip through individual images. So now you have all the tools you need, so let's get started creating. Step 6. Sketching. Sketching is the first step when drawing something. This is where we attempt to capture the general shape of everything through simple lines. People often say, I can't even draw a straight line, as a defense for not drawing at all. But the truth is that making a good line is extremely difficult. So instead of trying to make a good line right away, you simply draw multiple lines close to each other. The magical thing is that even though there are 10 lines there, your brain starts to see a single line somewhere in between. When you see the right shape within those lines, try to erase the rest, giving you a clean finished line. Not what you wanted? Undo and delete again, or simply draw new lines to delete. It is all about drawing a lot and keeping the best. By doing this, you are slowly finding something that looks pleasing to you. And when you have found a shape of the object that you like, we can move on. Now, when drawing multiple views of something, remember to try to make them all match, like they could be different images of the same object. You can do this by adding lines in the background at key places. That way, you make sure that, for example, the head is placed at the same height in both images. As for the drawing order, I personally find it easiest to just focus on the front view first, and work on it until I like its shape. Then when it's done, you can place the lines and continue on to a different view. That way, all you have to do is to try to imagine what this front image looks like from the side, and draw that. If you notice things not working when you do a different view, you can always go back and adjust the others. For some things, I think it can be a bit difficult to only draw it in 2D and fully imagine the result. In those cases, it might be a good idea to incorporate a bit of 3D into the concepting phase as well. After all, the computer beats everyone at things like perspective and sizes. A more concrete example of where I think it is really difficult to jump directly into sketching is when designing certain locations. 
Since they consist of several different parts and objects, you have to think about the layout and the size of everything in relation to each other. This can frankly become a bit overwhelming. One way to tackle this is to first do some 3D work as a reference for your sketching. It is much easier in 3D to move objects around and change their size and placement. So for the hospital room, I first made a very rough layout using basic geometric shapes. Then I took this as a reference and sketched on top of it, trying to find pleasing shapes for all the objects, making it all into a unity. This makes it a kind of 3D to 2D and then back to 3D again workflow, considering that the concept art will be used for 3D work later. More steps means more time of course, but considering how much easier each step was thanks to the previous one, I definitely think it's worth it. Another way to accomplish this is to basically sketch directly in 3D. The completely free 3D software Blender, which we will be using for all 3D related work later on, has a tool called the Grease Pencil. It allows you to draw in 3D directly, sketching out and trying different shapes, as well as combine it with normal 3D objects, planning layout and shapes together in one place. I didn't personally use this for my short film, but I know that a lot of people love this method and the freedom it gives, so you should definitely give it a look. Step 7. Shading. Now let's take a look at shading our images. Shading is when you take the previously flat image and add lights and shadow. This gives the image life in a whole new way. For images where you are trying to find a look and feel, shading is very important, since light contributes a lot to the look of something. For blueprint images, however, it is fairly unnecessary. They are more about showing the shape from a certain angle. Although shading does reveal the shape a bit more, it won't really add to what we used the blueprint for. That being said, I shaded my own blueprint images to make them look better simply because I am sharing my work online. If I had worked behind closed doors, I would not have done it, since it takes a lot of time and won't really add to the result of the finished film. So, if you have any images you feel like would benefit from being shaded, here is a quick overview of how you could do it. I am splitting this into multiple sub-steps to make it easier for you to just copy it for your own concept art. The first step is to identify a single piece within the drawing. You can think of a piece as something that can be drawn independently from the rest of the drawing. It could be the pot of a flower or the arm on a shirt. In this case, the different pieces of the drawing are pretty obvious since the robot is made up of different mechanical parts. Each of these parts could be painted without painting the rest, meaning that they are all different pieces. Let's pick one, which doesn't matter. For this one, I will just start with this shoulder piece. The second step is to create a new layer to draw on. Each piece should have its own layer so they can be worked on independently. But before we add a layer, we should add a folder to keep things organized. The shoulder is part of the torso, so let's add a folder and name it torso. Then inside it, we can add a new layer and name it shoulder. The third step is to paint over the selected piece with a solid color. Pick a neutral grey at 50% brightness, making it as close to black as it is to white. Activate some kind of smoothing on the brush so the lines you draw end up straight and clean instead of wiggly and uneven. Start by tracing the outside of the selected part. Then fill the center with the same color giving you a solid block of color. The fourth step is to lock the transparency of the layer. When it is activated, you can't add any new color to the layer, only change the one we have. This makes sure that this shape will stay intact no matter how you paint it later. The fifth step is to think about the lighting. Let's hide the layer for now, just so we can see the original lines clearly. This piece you are working on should have a three-dimensional shape, and the way to show that shape is to give it light and shadows. 
try to think about how much light would hit the different parts of this piece in the real world. Is the part covered by or close to some other pieces? Then it should be darker since less light would reach it. Is the part in the wide open? Then it should be lighter since more light would reach it. If you want a more realistic lighting in your drawing, imagine there is a light source somewhere in your scene as well. Give it an exact position in your mind, like over here. Then imagine it sends out light. The parts it hits should be lighter, and the parts it doesn't hit should be darker. The last step is to shade this solid block of color, to add the light and shadows you figured out in the previous step. We do this by painting over it with different shades of grey. Use a soft brush to make the shades smooth, with no apparent lines. Paint it in a darker grey to add shadows, and a lighter grey to add light. Since the transparency is locked on this layer, you can just paint away, without risking painting on something else. The bigger the brush is, the smoother the shades get. The smaller the brush is, the harsher they get. By painting with the brush almost completely outside of the piece like this, only the edges will be affected. You have now shaded one piece of the image. All you must do now is to repeat these six steps for every piece, and you will get a finished shaded painting. If you want to see me paint more of the robot, I have uploaded a time-lapse video where I shade the entire side view. Step 8. Color. The color plays a huge part in the look of a film, so it is a good idea to figure it out in the concept art stage. In order for the film to get a cohesive look, you need to come up with a color palette, a set of colors that you use while painting. That way, the same colors gets repeated throughout the image, instead of a bunch of random colors that doesn't seem to fit together. This will make a big difference in how pleasing your image is to look at. To actually add colors to your black and white digital painting is surprisingly simple. By adding a new layer and changing the blend mode to color, you can draw the colors separately. That way, no matter what you paint, the light and shadows of the image are left unaffected, making it non-destructive and easy to try out different things. Note that using the color blend mode, you are only affecting the hue and saturation of the color, not the brightness. It is the shading of the layer below that affects how light or dark something is. So if you want a color to be brighter or darker, your first instinct might be to adjust the shading. My advice is to not do this. Leave your lights and shadows alone. Instead, have a different layer where you brighten up or darken entire areas, just like how we did the color separately. You can easily do this using layers with different blend modes. For example, if you want a piece to be brighter, paint on a layer with the Add blend mode. And if you want a piece to be darker, paint on a layer with a Subtract blend mode. So, keep the lighting of the image and the actual color of the object separate, in different layers. It makes it much easier to work. Now, finding which colors to use and making sure that they work well together can be surprisingly difficult, so a good idea is to find an already existing color palette and use it. There is a great website called colorhunt.co, where you can browse hundreds of different color palettes that other people have made. If all you know is that you want a room in your film to be red, you can look at different palettes with reds in them, until you find one you like. Even if it's not exactly what you want, you can use it as a starting point, and then try to adjust it further until you are happy with how it looks. For my hospital room, I found these colors from Color Hunt, which I quite liked, and I used them to paint the different parts of the room. Here I have combined colors from different palettes and even tweaked them a bit, to find something that I think fits what I'm after. Note that throughout your film, you might end up with multiple different color palettes. It can be a good idea to have a different palette for each location in the film to really set them apart, as well as a different one for each of the characters. However, just because you give them different palettes does not mean that two different elements in the film can't share a few colors. 
giving elements some similarities can make the entire film feel more unified. Simply experiment away until you find a color scheme for your film that you like. Step 9. Effects. Now you have a sketched, perhaps shaded and colored image. If you are making a blueprint type of image, you would be done now. You want those images to be flat, exact and frankly boring. However, if you are trying to find the look or feel of something, it might be a good idea to add something extra to the image. There are several elements that might be present in the finished film that you would like to try out to see if it works. You might want to make a scene foggy to make it mystic, adding dark and dramatic shadows or having things blowing in the wind. In my look image for the ending location, I tried to portray the dirty air in the city as well as the piercing sun rays coming through. To add effects like this is actually fairly easy. Add a new layer and paint what you want, like sun rays. To control how strong the effect is, simply adjust the opacity of the layer. You can also try other blending modes to find the best way to incorporate the effect you have made into the image. And that's it. Simply add as many layers and effects as you want until you feel like you have captured the mood of your scene in the finished image. So, to summarize this two-part video. First decide on a general style for your film. Then find references for all its different elements. Decide what elements you will draw concept art for. Decide what type of images you will make for each element. Prepare your software and hardware. Sketch the image, perhaps add shading to the sketch, add color to the image, and if needed, add any extra effects. If you follow these steps, you will have finished concept art for all of the unique elements in your film. They might not be the prettiest images ever, but they will serve their purpose, allowing you to have something to base your 3D modeling on later. So, with the concept art done, we will move on to the next part in the creation of an animated film, the animatic. We will take a look at that in the next video.